July 9, 2016, Saturday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. Each of them had six wings. With two they veiled their faces. With two they veiled their feet. And with two they hovered aloft. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me the word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord, and girt about with strength. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house. O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household... Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your Father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Saturday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Isaiah 6, 1-8. This is the inaugural vision of Isaiah's prophetic career. He's in the temple, and he has a vision of God, and he sees smoke arising, probably the incense that's burning. He sees the seraphim with six wings hovering over. That might be a reference to the cherubim which were on top of the Ark of the Covenant. And then he hears, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Holy, 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 remember, is the Hebrew way of saying the superlative degree. Since they don't have a comparative or superlative, big, bigger, biggest, they use Holy, Holy for holier and Holy, Holy, Holy for holiest. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, 
He is the holiest upon the earth. And notice it says the earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah will be a prophet who will have to remind the king of Judah that it's Yahweh who controls the destiny of Judah against their enemies. That Yahweh is the one who can defeat the Assyrians, can defeat the Egyptians. And instead of relying upon the assistance of their emperors, they should rely upon Yahweh. Well, Isaiah has an experience which is common for those who encounter the holy. On the one side, they want to draw near, but on the other, they recognize their unworthiness. And in fact, Isaiah says, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. What does God do? He has one of the seraph cleanse his lips so that he might go forth and proclaim his word. A prophet is called not because he's worthy, but because God realizes that he is the one who can perform the mission, even if it means that man or woman has to be purified before they can proclaim the word of God. The gospel is from Matthew 10, 24 to 33. Remember yesterday we heard that the apostles were told that they would suffer for their mission, that they would be dragged before kings and tribunals, they would be flogged in the synagogue. And in fact, since this happened to Jesus, they should expect the same thing. Nevertheless, they have been given a special dignity because the very secrets of God will be revealed to them. And they should proclaim those things on the housetops. They shouldn't be afraid to proclaim the message, even if it means they'll have to pay the cost. What they should be afraid of is the one who can throw body and soul into Gehenna, the evil one. Remember, Gehenna is the Aramaic name for the Hinnon Valley. It was a valley that served as a temple dump, so it was filled with flies and stench and black smoke. And it was a place where one could think of a hellish punishment. Therefore, it became a symbol for the eternal punishment, hell. He promises that God would guard them. If God guards the sparrows, how much more would he guard his disciples? And so, once again, we're supposed to trust in the providence of God, even when things are not going well. Very often we try to do what's right and it just doesn't seem to work out. And we're frustrated because we think we might be doing something wrong. If we do what's right and in our conscience we truly believe that we've done the best we could and we should trust in the providence of God, the mercy of God, and rely on His goodness. Because sometimes God works even through failures. God allows things to happen that seem like a defeat, such as the cross, but which end up creating more good than could have occurred if everything had gone well. And may God bless us.